Okay, this is going to be part two of the demonstration on XAMPP for Mac. So where we left off is we were talking about this address and we need to figure out where our files are actually stored and like how we can get around this whole mess. Okay, so I don't know if you remember from the installer process, but it asked you where you wanted to store it and I backed up. Well, it's stored in uh, the applications folder. So if you want to go to your applications, um, you can look for something down at the bottom called XAMPP or XAMPP. That's how it's spelled. And we're going to look inside of that. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see some shortcuts that take you into another location. But there, here is this Manager OS X. This is your control panel. If you want this to always be available so that it's just easy and handy for you to start and you know stop your services in the dock, you can right click this. If it's already showing up here, you can right click this and say options and you can say keep in dock. Okay, so that's one option there that you've got. Also, you can uninstall it very simply from here inside the SAMP folder. Let's say that it goes a little bit wonky, which every once in a while these things do. So maybe you need to uninstall, reinstall, something like that. Um, and then there also is this folder called XAMPP files. All right, that's where all of these other things are located, but these are all just shortcuts, um, you know, to HT docs, logs, and so forth, okay? They're all inside of this uh, XAMPP files folder. And um, I want to just show you really quickly, inside of XAMPP files, where it says Apache 2, that's the Apache web service. The other thing that you're going to see is you're going to see a folder called HT docs. This is, and um, we'll get to this in a second, I'll come back to this, but this is where all of your web serving files are going to go. Um, this is where you're going to end up placing all of your stuff. And we're going to make a shortcut to this later so it's easy to access it. Um, and then also you would look down here and you would see this is where the actual control panel application is that you just made a shortcut to in the doc. And here's your MySQL service. Here's your PHP module, uh, and so forth. Okay, so that's where those files are actually located, just so you have an understanding. They're not located in deep in the system or something. They're just sitting in the applications in the XAMPP folder and then in XAMPP uh, files folder. Okay, so I want to show you something. Uh, let's go to htdocs. I'm just going to double click it so we don't have to look at all the other files. And what you're going to see here is you've got a folder excuse me, you've got a file called applications.html, you have an image, an IMG uh, folder, and then you've got this XAMPP folder, okay? And, um, and you've also got this index.php file. Well, the XAMPP folder is corresponding to this folder right here. So that means that localhost is actually corresponding to my htdocs folder right here. If I, I'm right clicking on the title of this um, and if I were to look at the pathway you see that it's application XAMPP, XAMPP files, htdocs. Okay. Um, if I want this to no longer be the thing that automatically gets loaded whenever I just simply go to localhost, then what I need to do is I need to modify this index page um, and just so for the heck of it, let's open it. I'm going to open it up. Uh, I'm, Dreamweaver is my default, so it's going to open it up in Dreamweaver. If you don't have Dreamweaver, you can use uh, whatever code editor you're comfortable with. And it tells me that this file is locked. Uh, it can be viewed, but it can't be changed. Let's just view it for right now. I just want to show you something, okay? And what it's doing and you don't have to understand this and don't let this freak you out just yet. This stuff is going to make more, a lot more sense later. But it has this PHP uh, uh, code right here. And then what this is doing is this, this is a conditional statement. And it's basically looking to see uh, if certain conditions exist. And then what it does right here is it gives it a header, what's called a header re redirection, uh, where it changes it and it tells it, hey, go to a new location called XAMPP. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that redirection file because we don't need that, is I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call it index.xamp. That way, 
if I want to have this file, if I want to locate this file, open this file so that I can go into here, then I can do so. But this way, if I rename it, it's not going to automatically load it because it's only going to be looking for a file called either index.php or index.html. And since index.html doesn't exist in here, then I'm going to go to index. Uh, .php if I'm the web service. If that doesn't exist, then what's going to happen is that it's going to automatically give me a web directory listing. So let's do that now that I renamed it. Now let's get rid of this ZAMP. Just go to localhost and you see now it gives me the listing of my web serving directory. And if I wanted to go to ZAMP, I could either go here and it redirects me or I could just go straight to the folder. Okay, but the point is that now I don't have to deal with all that other stuff. And the other thing too is that these other files where it says application, Bitnami, that stuff, I don't want to look at that every time I go to load my localhost page or a directory. So I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to make a new folder that said XAMPP uh, original files or something like that that I don't want to look at. and Basically, I could take all of these, the Bitnami, the Favicon, the IMG, and it, even if I want, I can take this one that I renamed, and I can dump them in here, because I can still get to that XAMPP folder. All right, so if I go here and I go refresh, now I don't have to look as many at as many things, and I can still go right into that XAMPP file or folder, and I can change all of these uh, security things and look at my PHP, my admin, and <clears throat> and then there's this, uh, don't worry about the webalizer, just leave it alone. Um, okay, so that helps me get started. And if you really wanted to um, double check, you know, what we could do is go to um, Dreamweaver, open a new file real quick. And I'm going to go ahead down here and I'm going to tell it to be a PHP. Um, and I'm going to use blank page with no template. All right. And... <clears throat> I don't need any of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write really quickly, just make some PHP tags. And the way that those look is that you're going to have an open uh, open caret with a question mark and then directly immediately following the letters PHP. So all of those run together. So opening caret, question mark, PHP. And then I came down a few lines and then I'm going to close that tag with a question mark, close caret. All right, and then inside of that, I'm going to type in, uh, PHP, oops, PH, I can't type, PHP info, and then <clears throat> open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and then I'm going to put a semicolon, which is a terminator. And what this is, is this is a command. The terminator ends the command, and where it says PHP info, open and close paren, or parentheses, that is a function that is pre-built into the PHP library and it's going to do something kind of cool for me. So I'm going to save this and it's going to, yeah, I don't care about the uh, template. So I'm going to just go ahead and save. And we're going to save this because I haven't created my shortcut yet. I'm going to have to go and find my location. So I go to applications, XAMPP, uh, XAMPP files, and then we're going to find htdocs. Okay, and then I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this file info.php, and I'm going to save it in my htdocs folder. I'm going to close this now, and I want to show you something. Whenever I go to refresh my local host, I have this php info file, and when I click on it, what it does is it gives me all the environmental variables about my, my web service running php. It gives me all this information, which right now is a little overwhelming to look at, and you don't have to worry about it. But later, we might want to come and look at something on here. One of the things you can do, just to double check, and it should be fine, is I'm going to do a find. I just did a command F, and I'm going to look for uh, the word display underscore errors. Okay, and it automatically started to find it for me. And What's important is that the value for display errors is turned on. That is super, super important. And the reason for that is because you're a beginner and you want it to tell you what your errors are. If this is turned off, then all it's going to do when you have an error is load a blank page. And that is absolutely horrible whenever you're trying to figure out what's wrong with your page. 
So um, ZAMP by default turns that on. If you were to ever go back and install MAMP, M-A-M-P, um, it's a different, completely different web service uh, installation. Um, but if for some reason you don't like XAMPP and you decide to go and use MAMP, because a lot of people use that on Macs, you need to know that display errors by default is turned off. And so you would have to go into the PHP INI file and modify that. I'm not going to go into that here because we don't have to. So, um, and that's one of the benefits of using XAMPP, actually. So uh, anyway, but it tells you all sorts of environmental variables about your PHP installation that later might be very useful for us. Okay. So, um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to show you really quickly. Let's go back up. I'm going to right click and go back up to XAMPP files. And so I've got this htdocs. All right. And I could either make an alias here and drag it into a place for a shortcut. Or if you remember, let's just go back to applications. Okay, let's just start there. That's an easy place to start. So if you go to applications and go down to ZAMP, open that. And if you remember right directly inside the application ZAMP folder, there's the shortcut to htdocs. Well, if I click that, it takes me to that same place that we were before. So I can take this shortcut right here and I can just drag it like down into my sidebar so that it's really easy for me no matter what to get to get there. The other thing that I could do too, I could make a shortcut down in my dock. All right, so I need to put it down here with the other folders that I have. And if you want, you can change the way it looks. You can say folder so that you know it's the htdocs folder. If you wanted later, you could even give it a little icon, however you want to do. Okay. All right. So that's, uh, that's how you can get your shortcut going. And that's how you can get started understanding the file system and which folder relates to your actual uh, hosting web service when you go to uh, local cannot spell today localhost all right so that you understand that localhost corresponds with this htdocs